In this video, I will continue from the last session, which introduced a Python list. The list value is a mutable data type. That means a value can be added, removed, or changed. We call it from the strings video, a string value is immutable, meaning it cannot be changed. The focus of this video will be slicing a list and modifying a list. If you're interested in more content, feel free to read the transcript on GitHub or download the source code. Also, like this video and subscribe to my channel. Plus, follow me on Twitter, connect with me on LinkedIn and Facebook. In the IDE, let's start by slicing a list, which is similar to the range function. We slice by defining two integers that will return one value and form a new list. Return more than one value and form a new list. Therefore, I will type one colon five. Index one will grab number eight, but index five will stop and not print the last item number eight. I'm gonna add a print statement before and after the slice. Print numbers, uh-oh, numbers. And I'm gonna do the same below it. And when I run, we only see numbers eight, two, one, and seven. Python prints a slice of the numbers list. The second integer always go up to an index position and stop but will not include that item. As a shortcut, we can remove one of these indexes or both of these indexes without the second integer. Index five, the slice evaluates to the end of the list. Run, and this time we see eight. All of the numbers are eight, two, one, and seven. The starting index is similar. Without the starting index, then the slice starts at the beginning of the list. If I add three for the second integer, which is number one, and remove the first integer, then Python will automatically start our slice at index zero. Run, and this time we see five, eight, and two. Now, Let's modify the list by changing, adding, removing, and sorting the items. To change a value, we write the list name like letters. Square brackets, then the index number six. Six is the last item value for James. Assign a new value like Janice. Print letters two times. Now, the updated list shows Janice. There is more than one way to add an item to a list. We can insert, append, and extend. To insert, we write numbers dot insert. Insert takes two parameters. The first parameter is the index where we want to add the item. How about position one? Now, the second parameter is the value we want to add, and that is 34. I'm gonna print numbers two times. Run, and the console shows 34 was inserted at position one. The other items get pushed to the right of 34. If we want to add an item to the end of our list, we can use the append method. Write, uh-oh, letters. Now, when I write letters, I'm gonna also print it before and after the append method. Now, the letter we want to append or the name I'm going to append is Jackie. Run, 
and the console shows Jackie. The append and extend methods are similar and can be confusing. Both methods add to the end of a list. However, it's best to use append when adding one item and extend when adding more than one item. Let me show you the difference. We see how append display Jackie at the end with one item. Watch how extend operates. Now I'm going to run and we see how the console shows each letter as one item. Watch what happens when adding more than one item. Let's say we have another list called letters underscore two and I'm going to pass in some values like Jackie and Joe. To extend, we write the letters or the list name, letters two, then run. And we see Jackie and Joe are added to the end of the list. That's good. However, when it comes to append, when I run, Jackie and Joe are still added to the end of the list, but look how it's added to the end of the list. It's added to the end of the list by looking like a list within a list, just like the Boolean list of values. We prefer not to have a list within a list, but have each individual name. Let me show you why. Add one more print statement to this at line 10. And I'm going to return letters. And I'm going to pass in seven. And then run. And the console shows the complete list and not just Jackie, which is Jackie could probably be number seven. But it can show the complete list. That's why it's best to use append for adding one item and extend when adding more than one item. I'm going to erase all these print statements or just this print statement. And let me show you about remove. Letters dot remove, then pass in a value like X. Run and the console does not show the letter X. It was removed from the list. If you know the position of an item, then you can use the DEL statement. Then write the name of the list, which is letters, open in square brackets, and pass in zero, and run. And we see the capital letter A was removed from the list. Another method is the pop method. By default, it removes the last item from a list. We write letters dot pop. Then run. And we see James was removed from this new formed list. Pop is unique because it allows us to remove an item but still work with that item. Assign letters dot pop to a value like pop underscore letter. So now when I run, I'm going to pass in pop letter by adding another print statement, then run. And we see James was removed from the list, but also displayed at the end because we can still play with the list. For sorting an item, we write numbers dot sort. I'm going to also print numbers before and after the sort method. Now we run and we see the items are in ascending order. One, two, five, seven, eight, eight. If we want the items in descending order, then we pass in reverse 
equal true. So now when I run, we see it starts from the back by 887521. We can reverse the list to show the last item first and the first item last by writing numbers dot reverse. This time when I run, we see it shows eight, which was the last item, and five, which was the first item last. Now, when it comes to sorting alphabets, this is interesting because if I write letters dot sort, uh-oh, there it is. Watch what happens when we print. You see, if you notice, the lowercase letters A and B are at the end of the list. They are not sorted in alphabetical order. The sort method using ASCII alphabetical, the sort method uses an ASCII medical order and not alphabetical order. ASCII medical order means all uppercase letters comes before the lowercase letters. To sort in alphabetical order, we can pass in key equal to str dot lower, then run. When I remove these parentheses, there it is. Now we see the list is in alphabetical order. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next session.